What's up guys and welcome back to another video. I hope you well, hope you're doing good. Uh, this video today is about Ramadan. So if you're doing Ramadan right now, uh, you're probably, uh, your training's probably suffering, uh, your nutrition is probably, you know, challenging. Uh, maybe you're not maybe you're scared of losing muscle gains and maybe you're not even training because you don't know what to do well fear not because this video is for you so let's dive into it uh, the first thing I want to talk about is I just want to set your expectations for this period because you know you can't consume any calories or any liquids whilst the Sun is up this is suboptimal from a training standpoint from a performance standpoint from a nutrition standpoint this is suboptimal and for that reason, I wouldn't recommend bulking. It's definitely not bulking, okay? Maybe you can do a cut, and I see some people do like a mini cut during this period. But also, uh, if you do cut during this period, uh, because you've got fewer meals, and the meals are, you know, at the ends of the day, there's gonna be less protein synthesis, and you're more likely to be losing some muscle tissue. So the safest option is to just eat at maintenance, okay? and just try and maintain what you've got. Like during this period, we're not trying to build new muscle tissue, we're not trying to uh, lose fat, we're just trying to maintain what we've got. And that also goes into our training as well. You know, we're not gonna be doing one rep maxes, we're not gonna be going for PRs and personal bests. Uh, and maybe we're not even training to failure, okay? Maybe we're not doing anything crazy, maybe we just uh, reduce the intensity slightly during this period. Um, just so, uh, you know, we're still getting in the gym, we're still getting sessions in, uh, we're still doing something uh, but we're not trying to max out and uh, you know hit all-time highs or anything like that okay so now that your expectations are set uh, there's a few variables that we need to look at first of all obviously the main one is eating and drinking <coughs> excuse me so you can't eat or drink anything when uh, the sun is up so I think most of you are gonna have to wake up before sunrise to do a prayer this will be a good opportunity um to get some uh food in get some calories in uh for most of you um for most people what i found is they prefer to have uh, the calories towards the end of the day okay uh, you know wait until after sunset uh, and have the, the main portion of your calories then that is probably going to work the best for most people uh, if you wanted to optimize this period for the health benefits it would actually be more healthy to consume all your calories at the start of the day uh, you know you wake up uh, before sunrise you would have all your calories during that period before sunrise and then you would fast throughout the day and go to bed fasted at night from a health point of view that will probably be uh, the most optimal because you're going to bed on an empty stomach uh, and you've got a long fasting window. If you do it the other way around, okay, uh, you're going to be eating quite close to bedtime and that's going to affect your sleep, it's going to affect recovery, it's going to affect uh, a lot of things and ideally you, you want to front load uh, your, your calories uh, as much as possible from a purely health point of view. But there's going to be some cons to doing that. Uh, the, the biggest one is the social aspect, obviously breaking the fast after the day after the sunset's gone down is a big part of Ramadan uh, and if you're not able to do that it's going to make this period much harder for yourself so you've got to think about other factors not just uh, sort of like what's optimal from a health point of view but what's also optimal for kind of your lifestyle uh, and what you're doing uh, so personally uh, what I would do is I would consume most of my calories if not all my calories uh, at the end of the day after the sunset <clears throat> now I'm actually a quite a, a morning person I go to bed quite early uh, for this reason I would actually change my sleep schedule to accommodate this because I don't want to be eating you know close to bedtime ideally three hours before bed minimum minimum three hours without eating before bed so in order for me to do this uh, you know I might have to push uh, my bedtime back a little bit later what else would I be doing uh, I would also, um, f for me, I don't have a problem eating like, you know, 3,000 calories in one meal. I mean, uh, yeah, I, to be honest, I can do that quite easily. Most people can't. And also, is it optimal? Probably not, especially if, you know, you're going to be training in the evening as well, which we'll talk about training in a second. So I'll be trying to 
eat two meals, okay? When, as soon as the sun goes down, you're breaking the fast, uh, you know, with your family, your buddies, whatever. And then I would get a session in. I would get a session in and then I would eat another meal post-workout. And then ideally you've got three hours before bed, okay? That's kind of how I would structure my training and nutrition. Now, another option with regards to your training is to just train any time of day, okay? But if you do it fasted, and especially if you do it like after you've been fasted for a long time, you can't drink anything, you can't, uh, you haven't eaten anything for a long time, realistically, uh, your training is gonna suffer because of that. So for this reason, what I would like to do is uh, push my sleep schedule a little bit later. I will be looking to uh, consume most, if not all my calories after sunset, have a meal, wait some time go to the gym train uh, obviously just train moderately i'm not trying to you know overexert myself or anything like that i'm just trying to maintain what i've got uh, just do enough to to get by and you know stimulate the muscles but i'm not really ch chasing growth or uh you know personal best or anything like that and then i would be looking to have uh, another meal after training and then ideally you know three hours before you go to sleep and that's it guys that is how i would eat and train during ramadan now if you're worried about um losing gains uh, if you're worried uh you know um that things are suboptimal from a training point of view i just want to remind you that this is just you know one month of 12 of the year if you do everything right for the rest of the year even if you get this month a little bit wrong in the grand scheme of things it's not going to make uh, too much difference but you've just got to consider what works for you okay you can optimize purely from a health point of view but maybe the social aspect suffers you can optimize for the social aspect but maybe it's a little bit less optimal from a training point of view it really comes down to what will work best for you um so yeah i hope that helps guys uh, if you want some help 